Hello everyone, so this is going to be the Toast Guide. Now I'm going to preface this. This is going to sound a little bit salty towards the end. I have some bad things to say, and some very good things to say about Toast. The bad things about Toast aren't necessarily about Toast itself, it's about the status system within the game. And I also am going to offer how they can solve this issue um, within the video, so if they do manage to see it, or if they get their hands on this, please fix. Um, but that being said, I play Toast weapon-based. I prefer to run him with a missile uh, launcher, as the missile launcher does the highest base damage out of all the weapons for, um, for the heavyweight breakers. So when you're doing a weapon-based build, it's your best friend, basically. The only downside to this is the uh, missile launcher only has one ammo in the mag, and it's got a very long reload time. So with the relic setup I use, we circumvent this. You're going to see that I'm using a Venom cast on my hand, so if we go to the relics, you'll see why. It's a little bit of a different setup in comparison to what I usually do on Breakers, but I run Abundance, Critical Defender, Giant Strength, and Attack Defender. This is why you see me with the Venom Caster in my hand at the start of the runs. I like to stack the Attack Defender on the first planet before we even do anything. I'll literally spawn in and start hurting myself with the Venom Caster to stack it up, giving me the 200% uh, the 200 attack power just straight away. It's really nice. Giant Strength is really, really good. It gives you a lot of base attack power. It gives you lots of value behind the attack power if we actually open our attack power right now you'll see we're at 344 this is literally just due to the giant strength and the um little bit of upgrades in the seasonal upgrade tree and the toy worker um and then abundance this gives us magazine capacity this is basically like large mag and weapon ma magazine all put into one relic so i opt to run this instead of mercy as we're going to be hurting ourselves quite a bit in the early run so maintaining Mercy is going to be hard until we get some upgrades down the road. So we choose to pick up Mercy within the run instead. Um, but that being said, the Giant Strength coupled with the Crit Defender, once we drop our Venom Caster, this allows us to keep hurting ourselves anyway. To snack up our Crit Defender for the 50% crit this is going to give us. And if you look at my crit page right now, that will take us straight to 65% crit from Planet 1. That's that's really good for a weapon play, uh, build. Now there is technically... A more friendly way of running toast you could drop abundance and put an infinite mag and then drop attack defender as we're not going to be able to hurt ourselves once we have infinite mag anyway apart from giant strength but i don't suggest sitting there for an hour stacking attack defender with a giant strength um doing this will give you more quality of life it's less annoying management but the damage is significantly lower and trust me toast needs his damage for when you get to planet nine other relics um you're going to see in here are we got our weapon based stuff toast doesn't need too much weapon power based stuff as he can get quite a lot of weapon power from his skills uh, but in the scenarios where you don't find great weapons to finish off capping out your weapon power we've got powered high power rounds here we've got excellent rounds in here and we've also got weapon amplification mag and blood box in here together this is around like this is 300 weapon power if you manage to get all three of these really nice plus then you're going to have um 50 from abundance so that's 350 and then you'll have at least 200% from your skill upgrades. So that's 550% weapon power just from a couple of relics and some skill upgrades. That's great. Um, since we're going to be using the missile launcher as our, bain, our main source of damage, uh, the dr biggest drawback in the DPS of this after you've sorted your ammo problem out is its attack speed. So speed magazine and acceleration are going to significantly boost your DPS the moment you pick these relics up and it becomes night and day between when you did have it and you didn't have it and it becomes a epileptic nightmare on your screen. Um, we then have Abundance in here, so if we manage to pick up Abundance later into the run, much like Mercy, both requiring you to be 100% health, Toast has ways of healing through Singularity and a lot of attack power, plus shield upgrades which help with this. Abundance will help cap out our crit, just making our damage a bit more consistent and a lot more bursty. And then we have critical damage based relics to really amplify how much we're going to be critting. And I, in seasonal, I've had the missile launcher hitting for three millions at points. And in uh, Camp Night Extreme, I've had it hitting for, I think, 1.8 million was the largest in the last run at some point. So this can hit really hard. And considering the fact how fast it'll be shooting, 1.8 million every like 0.5 seconds is a lot of damage. Um. In the lower section, you're going to notice that we've got relics that are either going to be requiring Toast to play in a certain way, which is uncomfortable, considering how clunky he can be at times with his low survival skill cooldown, so this being Turret Grease, and the fact that his cooldowns really don't matter to him. You pretty much just throw shit as you get it. Um, charging Grease doesn't matter. You, you, you want to be throwing your cooldowns whenever you get them, really, but not wasting them when they're immune, so you're going to have whatever you need at the time you need it anyway as Toast. His cooldowns are very forgiving. 
Then we have the knives in here. I primarily run Campanella Extreme and Campanella Normal. So these knives being here just because I can't stack them in those, they like there's ways of stacking them, but then your run will be into like the hours. So there's no point. Uh, so we just put that here so they just don't show up in the pause often. In seasonal, bump these back up to medium though, like especially the crit knife, and get these stacked. Very good for your runs in seasonal. Uh, then we have charging grease. There's never going to be a moment you're not shooting. Um, we don't care for skill power. Sniper telescope wouldn't be bad, but because of the fact that we want to be playing near our shields, the bosses are going to be near us anyway. So we opt for just getting something like gold tooth instead. And then weapon related stuff. We don't want extra uh, immunity device. I've said this in the past. Hurt, anything that says immunity to all the status effects stops you hurting yourself with giant's neck, which means we can't stack our crit defender before fights. That simple. And that is effect duration doesn't matter. And we don't want the weapon drop rate stuff as it's just a dead stat. It does. It really doesn't do anything. Um, moving over to skill upgrades. I opt to run with the uh, singularity at the start. Both the singularity and the shield upgrade are great. To start with, they give you the same benefits. The only difference is you don't have to play near your shield at the start. So if you get something like um, your first boss being armor, for example, and he gets in his rolling phase, you you're going to be using your shield a lot of the time to block the spines. So you might not have it ready, as well as something like Orisha Mammoth, who will move around a lot, force you out of your shield. For those reasons, I just opt to start with the Singularity Grenade um, upgrade for the weapon power, as you just throw it and you've got it. Um, in Seasonal, though, I would highly recommend that you run the Burn Target upgrade. This is his highest DPS option, but due to the fact that Protean is a static boss within the Extreme and the Campanella pool, um, I try to avoid these burn target upgrades unless there's lots and lots of planets in a row leading up to Protean that can be burned, just because of the fact once you're at Protean, if you can't burn Protean, which you can't because he's immune at all time, you lose all value to these burn target upgrades, as big as they are. And it's really sad because it really hurts Toast's damage, and I'm going to ramble about that in a bit. Uh, but upgrade-wise, Singularity, then we want to find our Energy War upgrade. You basically want both of these. That's 200% weapon power. It's bonkers. It's great. Um, then next up, we want to find the Singularity upgrade to give us a 50% multiplier whilst enemies remain inside it. This affects everyone on your team's damage, by the way. So in multiplayer settings, this is a huge pickup, as this will also stack with the Bronte Ball that does the same, and then it will also stack with the Quake Spiral Field damage that does the same. You can rack up a lot of multipliers, and that really helps your damage. Um, you're going to see here, I was messing with some things. Just avoid this upgrade. You're not going to need it, thanks to Shoulder Tackle. Um, same thing here. The black hole size will help on the duo boss planets, where they stack, where, where there's two bosses running at you, like Orish and Mammoth or the cats. The burn targets, again, doesn't help on Protean, so that's a little bit less valued here. But the fact that it makes the black hole bigger means once you have this upgrade as well, they combo together really nicely to maintain that 50% ball supplier on everything that's caught within it. And then the cooldown just lets you do it more often, but you don't need to do it that often. You can pretty much Singularity while Singularity is still up if you end up getting this, but they don't stack. Uh, crash wave wise, the only one we really care for within the Campanella side of things is the attack power on crash wave. This does count if you hit the same enemy over and over, so eventually you will get this to 5. And it's, it's good, it's a lot of attack power, it's free attack power through the course of a fight. It's, it's gonna help you. Um, in Seasonal though, then picking up things like this burn target and picking up the damage area just means you can hit more enemies and you can use it from further away and clip bosses and stuff like that with it to apply burn from a distance that's really helpful as well as the cooldown is really nice and same as on the weapon uh, power side of things on the shield cooldown will just help you have this up more often and the length does affect how big the radius is going to be for you to stand in to get weapon power so these are the only two that really matter now the thing to note here is as Toast, your best friend are your iframes. He, that's the way you're going to survive most things. So the cooldown on your shield and the cooldown on your crash wave are important. So if I go on Toast real quick, for this entire animation that you see him throwing out his shield right now, whilst his shoulder is being thrown up, he's immune to damage. You can use this to avoid, like, Protean charging at you. You can use this to avoid the front punches from Arctic gear. It's really useful. As well as crash wave. Whilst you're jumping and slamming on the floor like that, you're immune to damage. This is going to be your main source of dodging and surviving things, as his shoulder tackle has a relatively long cooldown. Um, going over toy workers though, I opted to run Gunhound. 
This ended up being redundant in the way, because like I said, Toast has a lot of ways of gaining weapon power. So if you get a lot of weapon power on your weapon, plus the relics and the skill upgrades, you're going to cap. Um, you're going to cap out your weapon power at 700%. Um, so this became redundant. Ideally, I should have ran this for the extra boss target, the little bit more crit damage, and the shield, helping giving me a more attack power and just keeping me safer. Um, a high V2 would also be a great option if this is just better for you, but in a sense, any toy work is great as long as it's rolled some crit damage. Crit chance isn't a terrible thing, that means you can avoid abundance. And ignore enemy defense is huge for Toast as he lacks big time his defense shred. Now for the part the video didn't want to really do, but I kind of have to talk about it. The issue with Toast and why his damage falls off so hard isn't an issue with Toast. That's an issue with the status system. Bosses being immune to certain elements in theory makes sense and is good, but when you have bosses that are always in a boss pool, so this being someone like Protean for example who is always in the Campanella pool, always in the Campanella extreme pool, it greatly harms characters, especially Toast, who are burn. This makes it so their largest multipliers that they have available to them, the thing that actually makes him viable and do damage on any other boss, no longer works, so fighting Protean becomes a slugfest. It's killable, and it's doable, but it's not fun, and why Like, why would you want your players not to have fun playing a game? Um, the biggest solution for this would be, one, just remove the immunity. Just allow us to burn, like burn planets, allow us to freeze, freeze planets, and stuff like that. It makes no sense. We're playing burn breakers and they can set us on fire. Why shouldn't it be the same? Um, or, on relics like status effect scope, where it increases status effect duration, allow them to also make bosses vulnerable to that element. So allow, if I on Toast picked up status effect scope and I went against Protean and I shot the boss first to apply the debuff from status effect scope, that should allow me then to burn Protean. That's my solution for it. And in my eyes, won't really be that hard to solve. It's a, it's a matter of just, you, you, did, you did it to robots, you made them to immune to shock at one point. You could do the same thing with Protean. You could just remove the immunity to burns. Um, the issue for this is, I'm going to play at the start of this uh, video a clip of me killing Kraken in the exact same run I'm going to play at the end, me killing Protean. This, the damage difference is just night and day, and the relics I got going up to Protean should result in more damage, but because I can't utilize my multipliers, you hit a brick wall. And on top of that, Protean is also still bugged from him having super armor stick if you get him into the lifesteal phase from the fire phase. I don't know why, at this point I'm starting to feel like it's intended. Um, if you don't have defense shred, then that phase just becomes really long, especially on characters like Toast. Um, the only reason this isn't really an issue for characters like Jungler and Liner is because they have so much more raw damage available to them that they can kind of ignore this problem and just force their way through it. Uh, but Toast doesn't have that luxury. Toast is all about his multipliers. Um, Especially when you give him weapons like Venom Caster, which do little base damage, so adding all these multipliers and um, weapon power onto them doesn't help much. Most of the damage of those weapons come from the status that they bring. Now you can just run Venom Caster against uh, Protean and get by fine, but it's not fast, it's not a great experience, and doing the same thing for four seasons is not fun. Anyway, like I said, that was a little bit of a salty and a little bit rambly, but it needed to be said. Uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Enjoy the sluggy protean clip at the end, and I'll see you in the next one.